pedagogic and scholar transport system, which will ensure that learners keep social distance. Introduction of technology, which will lessen the time learners spend in physical schools and integrate it into technological form of teaching and learning. Maximal usage of technology as a method of teaching and learning should constitute the core of what government adopts as part of the policy and practice of education in South Africa. We, as the EFF, fully respect the right of religious institutions to gather and worship in common spaces. We, however, appeal to all religious leader, leaders to exercise this right with maximum caution and respect of life. Religious leaders who care about the well-being of their people should not rush into religious gatherings because this will compromise the health of their members. Religion and worshipping are not banned in South Africa. And religious leaders know that religious rights can be exercised without gatherings of many people. Government should finalize establishment of state bank. And as we said, African bank must be the nuclear of the state bank. Private banks have been benefiting from the money of the state, which is there, which if there was a state bank would have, well, would have been redirected to useful programs of the state. In the immediate, we demand that all social grants and salaries of public servants must be cleared and paid through African Bank, which must be later transferred to fully state-owned and controlled. We make all these demands because we know that in times of crisis, private capitalists will not come to the party. They will not stop their ruthlessness because even when there is no crisis, they treat our people with disdain and ruthlessness. While society is focused, focused on efforts to save lives from the COVID-19 pandemic, Pravin Godan, Jamnandas himself, and his cronies are trying to dispense of public assets like SAA and SA Express. This will lead to tens of thousands of workers losing their jobs and livelihoods. There is not, there is not a business anywhere in the world that is not facing challenges since December of 2019 due to COVID-19. This is particularly worse for business that were trying to implement recovery strategies. Jamnandas does not believe in state-owned enterprises, and he will never save them. He intends to dispose of them to his friends in the white monopoly capital circles in exchange for futile BEE shares. He must be stopped. To this extent, we shall approach our cause to defend the opportunistic and senseless closure of selling off of these state companies in the name of saving jobs. We have stated our absolute rejection to the premature, reckless, senseless ending of the lockdown. All EFF public representatives, councillors, MPLs and MPs must continue to conduct oversight work of all government entities through parliament, legislature, and councils. In the next weeks, EFF public representatives are called upon to focus oversight on exposing workplaces, schools, universities, places of worship, and public transport where necessary COVID-19 health precautions have not, have not been put in place. We have also established a labor desk under the leadership of National Chairperson Veronica Mente and Commissar Natasha Ntlangwini and Mpomorulani, which will be assisting workers who are being mistreated by their employers. We are aware that companies have claimed UIF monies but not paying workers. We are aware that many workplaces are opened without compliance to health and safety standards. The Labor Desk will be intervening in all these cases to protect 
the lives and dignity of workers. During this period, the EFF will make policy and legislative submission to Parliament, which will seek to combine local government with the provincial and national elections so that South Africa transit into common election system. The reality of separate election is cumbersome and has often deprived public representatives of an opportunity to deliver on their promises and commitments. If our proposal is accepted, the 2021 local government election must be postponed to 2024 and held together with the provincial and national elections. In our proposal, we will clearly articulate that all dysfunctional municipalities under administration must go for election in 2021 for a term that will finish with the rest in 2024. South Africa must have one election on five-year intervals instead of elections every two years. The South African government, which currently occupies position of chairperson of the African Union, must play an important role in the continent in the continental fight against COVID-19 and should coordinate the global efforts through the World Health Organization. Winning the fight against one country in the African continent will be meaningless because we are one people and will inevitably have to humanly interact in the future. The African continent must take the best practices from each other, from each of the countries, and make these continental responses. The faster test kits method developed in South Africa should be made available for all countries in the continent. The ventilators that are developed at, cheap, at cheaper and more accessible rate in Senegal should be made available to all African countries. Madagascar's re remedy, remedy must be subjected to thorough scientific testing and if found to be effective, must be available for all African countries. The EFF stands opposed to the attempts of the United States government of sabotaging the World Health Organization, which is the only organization that can meaningfully coordinate a global response to a global crisis. Petty politics and fights during this period will not assist anyone. During the Cold War period, the socialist USSR and the imperialist US collaborated to develop vaccine for and a common war against polio and smallpox. The present petty squabbles by the most powerful countries in the world must come to an end. The World Health Organization must, however, not be hijacked by private business and philanthropist interest of global capitalists. We take this opportunity once again to commend the Cuban government for helping the world to fight the coronavirus pandemic. The Cuban government has sent medical practitioners not only to South Africa, but to many countries in the Caribbean, Jamaica, Bahamas, to Italy, Angola, Cape Verde. The spirit of internationalism and international solidarity that defines the Cubans must define all people in the world. We salute the Cuban, the Cuban doctors and their selflessness. The right to life is the, is the most fundamental and most important right, right in the South African constitutional democracy and must not be sacrificed on the altar of political and, co and economic con convenience. The reality is that we all have an obligation to make sacrifices that should save lives and not make life sacrifices that will save the economy. The EFF strongly demands that government should reconsider the premature, senseless, rec and reckless reopening of various sectors of the economy and schools until there is a solid scientific basis to do so. I thank you. Thank you very much, President. Uh, we will now move on to questions. Do we have any questions, Bumi? Yes, we do. 
Uh, President Zinyi Samvumbu from Sunday Times asks, in EFF's view, by when would be the appropriate time to lift or ease the, the lockdown since there is no end in sight as to when there will be a cure or vaccine for COVID-19? And in light of Health Minister William Kiza's statement yesterday in Parliament that coronavirus could be with us for as long as two years, where do you strike the balance between saving lives and saving the economy? Secondly, in summary, what would have been the EFF's response strategy to COVID-19 had it been in government that is different to the incumbent government's risk-adjusted strategy? Oh, I thought we were doing the usual stuff of taking a... Okay, no, I think, uh, President, it's, I think it's better if we take one one as they come. Okay. They are lengthy as well. Okay. Our strategy... Um, as the EFF government is very simple. We will support uh, any social distancing which results on the basis of a scientific evidence presented by scientists. We want a lockdown which will lead to a situation where we flatten the cap and we save life. So if there is no scientific basis of saving life, we cannot agree that we must open the sectors of our society because we will destroy life. So the EFF approach is very simple. We must isolate our people. We must practice social distancing and we must lock down until a scientific solution is found. Those who are threatening that people will die of hunger are actually just misleading us because there, is no, there are no graves of hunger. There are graves of people killed by apartheid. There are graves of people killed by diseases. And we are going to see many of those graves because of this senseless and reckless approach of the current government. The EFF approach is fundamentally informed by save life, not the economy. The economy will come secondary, especially the economy that is based and controlled by white monopoly capital. Thank you very much, President. Um, Pumi, do you have another one? Yes. The second question is from Sophie Mukwena, SABC Foreign Editor. Looking at what is happening interna internationally, what's your assessment on performance of world leaders during this crisis? Are they providing leadership in the interests of global citizens? The issue of tobacco is a thorny one. What's your reaction to the current debate on ban banning sales of tobacco? Do you think uh, WHO has provided leadership, particularly the director at Ted Ross. We have said in our statement that the big bosses and big countries are not playing the expected role we expect from bigger states. They are engaged in petty politics. They are engaged in squabbles instead of coming together to quickly find a solution. And therefore, um, we cannot say that the world leaders are playing a, a, an expected role. And therefore, we, we really are disappointed that instead of leaders coming together, leaders are drifting apart and are calling each other all sorts of names, including discrediting the World Health Organization and its uh, a leadership. So that conduct is really uncalled for. We gave example where the USSR and the United States had to put their political and ideological differences aside to save life. And that is what we expect of world leaders today. The burning of tobacco should be supported by a scientific explanation. 
in the absence of scientific explanation, then is egoism and abuse of power. Scientifically, it has been proven that uh, the trauma units in the hospitals become extremely overpopulated with incidences that derives from alcohol. There's no one who can put a scientific argument that alcohol contributes significantly to overpopulation of trauma units. Is it, yeah? is it alcohol? Come again? Is it alcohol? It's also yes. So all I'm saying is that because of the trauma units, I mean, the contribution of alcohol into the trauma units. It cannot be correct that you uplift al uh, uh, alcohol sales and ban cigarette sales. So there is no, we know that cigarette kills and cigarette causes, you know, all types of diseases. But if you were to compare that with what alcohol does in the immediate, you will be amenable to lift the burning of cigarettes and continue the burning of alcohol. So there, there, there is no scientific explanation about that. We have been ex observing some unnecessary attack against uh, Minister Ngosa Zanadlamini Zuma that no, she's burning cigarettes because she's uh, supporting Mazoti uh, underground uh, of selling of cigarettes. It's nonsensical um, and uh, it's unacceptable. Because we all know where Nkosazana comes with the battle against tobacco. Her attitude on tobacco doesn't start now. And it's a principle stand she has taken. And we must support her. In the long run, tobacco is not a solution. We must, at some point, find a way where we have a society free of cigarettes. It's not a long-term uh, solution. So her attitude is correct. Her, her attitude on cigarette doesn't start now. Now, people don't know that Mazoti's uh, Cigarette Association is actually the one that is taking government to court. The association of BAT has not gone to court. They will never go to court because the burning of cigarettes benefit BAT more than small companies. So, the cigarette is banned in South Africa, not in Namibia. So, the BAT exists in Namibia. The BAT is a multinational company. So, when you ban cigarette in South Africa, the BAT doesn't get affected because it continues to sell in other countries. Hence, it will not go to court. But the small companies that sell in South Africa are the ones that are going to collapse. Because when you open the cigarette sales in South Africa, these companies will have collapsed and it will give the big companies and BAT in particular a more advantage. So the RET forces in the ANC that are supporting Kwasazan, they do so from a misinformed point of view of not having an appreciation of how tobacco politics operate. The burning of cigarettes in South Africa continues to benefit the multinational companies and it will destroy small companies that only exist in South Africa. But let's tell you, we don't care. Whether you close cigarette or you don't close cigarette in South Africa, we actually don't want cigarette. There is only one person in front here who smokes. <laughs> <laughs> we don't do those things of cigarettes. So 
<laughs> we, we are really not affected. But, but if you want to intellectualize it, bring a scientific argument and use that scientific <coughs> argument against the sale of alcohol. So if you put alcohol here and you put cigarette here, cigarette will win against alcohol if we are not going to be uh, emotional uh, uh, about it. So whether Mazoti sells illegal illicit cigarettes or not, like you keep on saying Mazoti sells illegal cigarettes, arrest Mazoti. You use illegal illicit cigarette of Mazoti to try and silence others. When people want to enter the debate on cigarette, ay, 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 it's Mazotis people. Ay, it's Mazotis people. Now, even that uh, differently looking one who wrote the book, uh, President Skippers, Jack Paul, came to confess that Mazoti has got nothing to do with what uh, Nkwasasana is doing. That rogue unit guy, uh, Van Lochenberg, also confirmed that, and those are the rogue. Confirmed that Mazoti has got nothing to do with Nkosa Zana's attitude on cigarette. They attack Nkosa Zana and discredit her for their own opportunistic reasons. And they use Mazoti uh, uh, to do so. So it's really uh, unfair. But you cannot keep on banning cigarettes and justify alcohol. Something very stupid happened, actually, Deputy President. They say um, taboo should not open. The club must not open. And then you can buy alcohol and go and drink at home. You know what they've done? They've moved the taboo from a regulated place into an unregulated place called home. They've closed the instead of open introducing regulations and saying if club is going to open, this is what you must comply with. Uh -uh. Buy alcohol, right? Go and drink at home. You effectively are going to turn our homes into clubs. There will not be peace. The abuse levels are going to increase. The levels of intolerance by neighbors is going to increase. You have just sent a mass into communities. That's number one. Number two, you close restaurants because you are talking about opening the economy. You close the restaurants and you open churches. What is the contribution of the church into the economy? The restaurants, by the way, practice social distancing, even without COVID-19. In the restaurants, you come with whoever you came with, the, you shall occupy this table. There will be spacing in between. It doesn't matter whether there is a queue outside. The restaurant will never allow strangers to come and occupy the table with the people who are not known to them. But those people that have been practicing social distancing, they, are, they, they must be closed. But also, in the restaurants, hygiene is number one. Because it's compulsory. You cannot run a restaurant without practicing high hygiene, high levels of hygiene. Now, not only that, there are inspectors hired by municipalities without COVID-19 to inspect the compliance of restaurants with uh, hygiene practices. That's a place that is highly regulated. You close it and still say, no, we, we are opening the economy. Why do you close restaurants? Because they are not owned by the Oppenheimers. They are not owned by uh, the Ruperts. They are not owned by the Minel family. You only open sectors that are owned by people who contribute, contributed money into CR17 towards the Nazareth Conference. Now, he is paying the debt 
with the lives of our people. He's risking the lives of our people because he took money from wrong people and those people want their money. I want to really make a plea to religious leaders. Do not open your places. If you love your people and you claim to occupy the high moral standard, you are the ones who should be saying your members should not come to church. We pray in the EFF, we support church. Members of the EFF, supporters of the EFF, do not go to church. It's a trap. You are going to die. It's a setup. Do not go to church. What a, look at what the church did in Bloemfontein. We have evidence what, of what the church can do. Leave those things of who's going to select who and all of that. We're not interested in that. Do not go to church. We call upon the caring leaders of religion not to connive with white capital to kill black people. Our people can still pray at home. Our leaders can still reach out to our people through different methods, be it a, a, a message, be it a recorded message, a recorded video, be it a YouTube live, Facebook live, it doesn't matter. One of the pastors was even saying, people can come to church and sit in the cars, and then he will preach, they will hear him from the cars. If, you, they, if they can hear you from the car, then they can hear you from home. Why do you risk their lives? Why do you want them on the streets? We are calling upon our religious leaders. You have always been there when no one was there for our people. The same way no one is there for us. Religious leaders must come to the party and discourage their members from going to church. We are saying to our members, supporters and South Africans, who have defeated a nonsensical apartheid regime which had no respect for black life, do not take your children to school until these people have complied with the health, safety, health and safety standards in schools. We all know that there are no toilets in public schools, particularly of black African people. There are no, there are no toilets. The, even those buildings that you see and refer to them as toilets, those toilets are not functioning. Let's go now. Let NG now choose any school of a choice. Let's go and inspect the toilets now. There are no toilets. The children at school, those of you who have gone to school, you will know, we drink water from the tap. We lean, kneel there and we go down there and drink water. The other one comes after you, we queue, drink water. Our children cannot wear the mask. We all want to comply. We carry these things. But these things are suffocating us. <laughs> and the only way not to wear this thing is you must stay at home. So we, why should we be told, told mask, wear mask, wear, wear mask to wear? Instead of preaching wearing mask, we must preach stay at home. Then mask will not be necessary. These things... I've tried them with all my boys. I, they don't last two minutes. Hey, Papa, remove. So imagine when we're not there. And the story that children are going to be safe inside the school there. Let's take that argument for a second. But when they come to school, 
The teacher is not there. They are working together. Our children walk. Only people who don't know the situation of our children will talk this nonsense they are talking. They don't meet at the schoolyard. They meet on the road to school. Already they've infected each other. They meet in a congested taxi, congested bus. Already before they arrive at school. After infecting each other, they are told to separate. They've already infected each other. What is the purpose of separating them at school? We are led by fools, non-thinkers. People who are sitting on top of their brains. We have a problem in this country. So these children, unless you're talking some elitist arrangement, but if you're talking our children, their meeting doesn't happen there. It happens even before. You open the economy and then you leave these children at home without parent supervision, you are also risking their lives. I am happy that history will give an account that the EFF discouraged the opening of mines. Look at what's happening in mines now. Our people are going to die in mines. And when they get sick, they get sent back to the village, by the way. They get removed from the hostels. They get evicted from mine. They take the disease right back home. What is Cyril saying when he says, it's in your hands? What is Cyril saying to my grandmother when he says, it's in, in the hands of an old woman? An old woman who was on her own during apartheid times, on the 27th of April, carried a white chicken to go and vote for a government that will protect her. Went to, a, a, went to queue there carrying a chicken, wanting to give it to Mandela that for the first time we are going to have a caring government. You say to that person, it's now in your hands, there's nothing we can do. Practically, what do you mean? Ramaphosa, when you say it's in the hands of my grandmother, what do you mean? What must she do? Because she stays in that home. The children go to work. Others go to school. They come back. They infect her. She didn't do anything. She listened to you, Mr. President. She is in her hands. She stayed at home. What, must she chase these people away? Our grannies are going to die the same way grannies died in their numbers in Italy because this government doesn't care about them. What are you saying when you say it's in your hands? You're saying to Gogo, it's on your own. Whether you die or not, I'm not there. After the people said in 1994, now we have a government of our own. Now we have a caring government. The government that's supposed to care for them says, Gogo, Mkulu, it's now in your hands. There's nothing we can do to save you. The same way it was in their hands when the Boers stormed into their houses, harassed them, killed them, raped women. There was no one to save them. We are back to that state. The children are now being sent to the streets. The same way children were sent to the streets in 1976 to fight the apartheid enemy. Now children are being sent to the streets again to fight an invisible enemy. We see history repeating itself in a different format. The only thing we can do, like we did during apartheid, we must refuse to comply and stay at home. We must engage in a stay away. Let, if this white economy collapses, let it collapse. If we are going to die of hunger, let us die with our boots on than kneeling down protecting the white monopoly economy. Yes. If we are going to be killed by the disease, let the disease kill us with our boots on at home, protecting ourselves, not surrendering to go and protect a white-owned economy. Yes. It's not our economy. If death comes, let death come. But we must die proud that we defied to protect the white economy. 
We protected our lives. Even when we tried, we still died. But at least we died with dignity and with our boots on. Thank you, President. Next question, Bumi, please. With the permission of the spokesperson, there's three short questions, okay, if I may ask them all. Malungelo Boy from Newsroom Africa asks, one of the things the EFF has been calling for is for the government to include race of those with COVID-19, including those who have died. What's the, what's the rationale behind this? Will this help fight, fighting COVID-19 in SA? Lise Gatandwa from News, News 24, do you agree that there should be parliamentary oversight on the executive or the NCCC? Samkele Masego from SABC News. If you don't save the economy, how would companies keep... Let's go back to 1-1 one, one because you are too fast. Oh, okay. the, was the, the first question? Malungelo Boy is asking, one of the things that the EFF has been calling for is for government to include the race of those with COVID-19, including those who have died. What's the rationale behind this? Will this help fighting COVID-19 in South Africa? It's very important that we know who is dying to demonstrate and to also prove exactly what we are saying, that it is our people who are going to die. And maybe if we start dishing out that information, people will begin to appreciate. Why are they racially profiling it in the U.S.? We know now who's dying in the U.S. We know now who's dying in the U.K. We need to know here who's dying, and what type of interventions can we make to save life. So it's very important that we ought to know. Uh, if you look at Cape Town, it is, it, and if you look at the numbers, you don't even have to get uh, to know the race. You look at the numbers per suburb and townships, it is our people. So we need to know from the authorities who's dying so that you begin to appreciate that this thing is going to wipe off our people and it must be stopped. And the only way we can stop it is by staying at home. If the banks are told, defer all payments, not uh, by individual application, it must be by regulation. Why is everyone else given regulations except the banks? So our people are in a state of panic and they themselves say, we want to go back to work because they are scared they are going to lose their houses and their cars. We need to guarantee our people that will continue to provide, especially for those who are suffering. Uh, food, and the food must not be distributed in a partisan manner. So that, 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 that's where we, we come from uh, as the EFF. Yeah? Thank you. The next question is from Lise Gatandwa, News 24. Do you agree that there should be parliamentary oversight on the executive or the NCCC? No, there must be parliamentary oversight on the executive. We want parliament. And uh, those virtual things of America and China and Europe that we are using, they're not effective. Half the time, those gogos of the ANC, they want to put uh, and Madalas, their faces into the screens there. Course, that's the first irritation you get. From there, they don't know how to use the facilities. I attended uh, one meeting, one visual meeting of the land. <laughs> Half the time, Matole Mutsa, the chairperson was disappearing. We don't know where the chair went. Then the meeting must stop because the old man doesn't know how to press. Even when he comes back, he doesn't know how to unmute himself. So it's not working. It's clumsy. It's a joke. So let parliament come to Pretoria. Let us go to Pretoria. Let us hold the executive accountable. The good thing with Pretoria is that all ministers are there. All DGs are there. Heads of government-owned uh, uh, companies, they're there. So why this insistence on Cape Town? Is it to honor 
the Sunset Clause uh, Pact, which we don't know why they arrived at such a conclusion that we must continue with that apartheid building uh, in, 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 in Cape Town. Like they say in C people, they are so obsessed with apartheid building. Parliament is not a building. Parliament is anywhere where the speaker declares that these premises are now declared parliament. The rules of parliament will apply. But all these apartheid spies who claim to be our leaders in the ANC are so obsessed with apartheid building in Cape Town. Even when they see that it is not safe to do business in Cape Town. It's not safe. Now, parliamentarians don't want to go to work. That's what. They, so when we said they must open parliament, they pretend like they've opened parliament. But no, a 50 will be in, in the real building. Others will be visual. Why? They are scared themselves to die. But their, our children must go. And she's going to test with them, or we are testing waters with our children. And you must go to Cape Town. If she's testing waters, let's test with her and Matol. Plus they are a proper age. Go, Cape Town, let's see if you'll come back <laughs> with underlying situation. Those ANC people have the time they are sick, all of them. If it's not the knees, it's something else. So let them go to Cape Town first, those sick people. Let them go. I get it. They say parliament is ready. They are open in this parliament in this way to pretend like they've opened parliament. But the reality is that they are at home. They're hiding. Huh? They're hiding. They're hiding behind curtains at home. Every one of them, when he appears on that visual, there's a curtain at the back. <laughs> All of them. But our children must go to school. We must not allow these politicians to play with the lives of our children. Angie must take the husband. Next flight, Cape Town. Let's see what's going to happen. Even the husband is leading us from home. He's chairing parliamentary committee from home. The ANC is extremely exposed to South Africa. They only plan for good times, not for bad times. That's poor planning. We must always plan, even for the invisible enemy. They don't do that. They don't do that. Today, when you erect a tent, when you erect a simple thing as a tent, you erect it in such a way that it must withstand the storm, even when the storm is not coming. All the weather reports can say the storm is not coming. There won't be wind. It, the, you know, it's going to be too nice and hot. But when we erect a tent, we erect it as if the storm is coming. Those people who are erecting tents, they plan better than the ANC government. Thank yes. You, give us Sam Kele Maseko from SABC News asks, if you don't save the economy, how would companies keep their employees with no stream of income? Would that not increase their dependence on government for in economic relief? There are economic interventions that have been made available. One of the most effective way we have suggested as the EFF is that the 200 billion which was going to service the debt must be redirected to service the essential services of our people. It is, it is a time of crisis. We must all survive with the little we have. People should not imagine luxury now. Because the problem with this, we can't survive, we can't do this, is because people want to live the same way even when there is no crisis. We must all drop the standard of living and humble ourselves. Government has got 200 billion to service the debt with different financial institutions. Government must tell them, we are not going to pay you. You all know we have a problem. And let that money service our people. So, 
It doesn't matter how long it takes. We have to navigate this crisis preoccupied with the intention to save life, not a white-owned economy. Thank you. Next one, Gomi. Sidi Madia from News24. She has two questions. The first one, the issue of liquor. You previously sent a legal letter in the face of the, uh, in the, face of the Gauteng Liquors liquor board's threat. The sale of alcohol is imminent. Will you seek to challenge this in the coming days? The second question, there has been great criticism of the collective approach taken by the government in dealing with this matter. Do you agree with the sentiment that the president has outsourced his role as commander in chief to some of his ministers, which has put Dr. Nkosazan and Lamini Zuma in the firing line? Firstly, we need to know the Disaster Act. In terms of the Disaster Act, the most powerful person now is Ngosaza. She's responsible for that act. Actually, these pronouncements, she's the one who's supposed to make those pronouncements. That's why the president is just uh, uh, playing his role as a father. But uh, the real cooking and putting the meal on the table is the mother of our family called South Africa, and that is Ngwasasa. So, and Ngwasasa understands that responsibility very well. She's not a, a little boy who will cry because she's being criticized. She knows it comes with the territory. She will only cry because this number one will use his soldiers in the media and white capital to discredit her unfairly. That's the only cry she will have. But otherwise, she knows that she holds a huge responsibility as things stand now. And there is nothing unfair about what we expect her uh, 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 to do. And uh, she has been doing very well. I liked it when she reversed that thing of cigarettes. The whole president calls a press conference to announce cigarettes. <laughs> Cyril must be ashamed of himself. The whole president calls a press conference to announce cigarettes. <laughs> and then Nkwasasana taught a person a lesson. Or those things that you discuss in a beer hall, ne? they are not going to happen here. It's not going to happen. So we like that. We hope that government will prevail, especially Nkwasasana, and fight this thing of alcohol. This alcohol is not going to be helpful. We are not going to take any legal action. It's a political campaign we are going to take to challenge the authorities. We must not take every political blunder to court. There are certain battles that we must fight on our own, and this is one such battle that we must fight. You know, my brothers and sisters, sometimes you also embarrass us in a big way. White people want alcohol to open because they want to make profit. You celebrate the opening of alcohol because you want to drink and drown in sorrows. You know, people were hooting. There were fireworks from people who were celebrating alcohol and people were celebrating alcohol on Twitter. Some of them, if you scroll down to when the lockdown started, they were tweeting and asking for money for electricity, asking for food parcels, saying to us that uh, the ANC is di discriminating us against food parcels. Now alcohol is announced. The same person is celebrating who announced that he doesn't have money for food is celebrating alcohol. Some of this stupidity must not be tolerated. You must start acting responsibly. There is nothing good about alcohol. Alcohol is destructive. Alcohol destroys families. Alcohol destroys life. 
alcohol contributes to unprotected sex and spreading of diseases. That's what you are celebrating. Alcohol contributes to domestic violence, abuse of children and women. The whole activist who said we stand against this and that, you come and celebrate the sale of alcohol. It was the youth of 1976 who went around closing bottle stores, destroying alcohol that they found in homes and saying to the elders who are dying out there, you are indulging in alcohol instead of coming to fight for our freedom. This alcohol contributed to the delay of our freedom because people found comfort in alcohol. We don't need alcohol, we need land. We don't need alcohol, we need economic freedom. We need our banks, we need our mines. That's what we should do fireworks for when they announce that the mines have been transferred into the hands of our people, there should be fireworks. Not alcohol. You are manipulated by whites to think that you are in charge when you are not. They want alcohol to open so that they can make profit. You want to drown yourself in alcohol and destroy your own future. Biggie Kale is right. There is no one, no one, who can say on a stage, a dignified person, the president of the republic, a minister, a CEO of a bank, chartered accountant, a lawyer, can't stand in front of us and say, I am what I am because of alcohol. Alcohol contributes nothing. EFF must not be shaken about it when it pronounces itself on alcohol. Comrades, Lose votes on principle. These people always come very late. You know we are leading them with ideas. They come very late. This alcohol is going to occupy hospitals. There won't be space for COVID-19 patients. There won't be. In the trauma unit, when we talk about sharing of resources, people think we are talking money. We don't have doctors. In the trauma unit, a person comes in there, he's got a panga on his head. A doctor is called to come and attend to this person. While the doctor is still stabilizing this the drunkard with a panga on his head, a COVID-19, critical COVID-19 patient needs attention of the doctor. The doctor can't leave the panga man for COVID-19 before he stabilizes the panga man. So, you are dividing the resources you do not have. Close the trauma units by through, close the trauma units through closing of alcohol. The next question is from Cindy Siwe Twala from Newsroom Africa. The Parliament Ad Hoc Committee on Land Expropriation Period has lapsed. What's the EFF's view on the missed deadlines to conclude consultative hearings by the committee, noting that the first missed opportunity was in March? The second question is, is the ruling party genuinely interested in the land expropriation without compensation this time around? We don't answer for ruling parties, so we must go and ask them. Uh, the, the, the postponement comes as a result of this crisis we're confronted with. Parliament could not sit, and the deadline came. So it's not like there was someone somewhere sabotaging the meeting of the deadline. We are now trying to find the best possible way. Because remember, we must go to the people who have not finished the consultation process. How are we going to meet the people under the circumstances? You want us now to go and meet the people so that they get infected. By the time the land come, there's no one. This land won't find anyone because they will have died of this COVID-19. So we want the land. And this land must find people. It was a correct decision not to proceed 
with the public hearings. Now, we're trying to find the most safer and creative way of making sure that we speak to our people. The first thing first, parliament must go back, and then we ought to discuss how are we going to do the outreach to our people, because we are a people's democracy. We cannot pass those acts without the participation of our people. Next question is from Ayan Damluli, Independent Media. Over the last few weeks, there have been revelations of certain state-owned entities being embroiled in corruption during COVID-19, particularly in water and sanitation, which is meant to service the basic necessities of the poor. What measures should be put in place to combat corruption in these institutions where government is reported to have lost 16 billion rands in ir irregular expenditure? Where we came across corruption, as the EFF, we have reported it. In Northwest, uh, we found that a, a person was supplying the water tanks. And those water tanks were not SABS uh, approved. And uh, to show that we were correct, those water tanks did not even last. They were damaged in less than a month. We then went uh, to an extent of going to look at what were, what were the tender requirements. The supplier of the water tanks was asked to supply 5,000 liters. In other instances, it would supply 2,500 liters because they think no one is monitoring. The leadership of the EFF, the commissars, and the province of Northwest have reported that matter uh, to the authorities. There is a big problem, comrades, in the public sector now. There is too much thieving and stealing. Ministers are asking uh, chiefs of staff not to follow regulations and give tenders to their friends. So it will be in some few departments, but majority of the departments People who are working in ministerial offices, spokespersons, chiefs of staff, the PAs of ministers are being asked to do illegal things as we speak now. And when they refuse to comply with illegal instructions of ministers, they are served with termination letters. Simple letters like, no, no, when you were supposed to give me a document, you didn't give me a document at two. Uh, you were supposed to give me a document at two, you gave me a document at six. Your, your contract is terminated. But that's not the real issue. A lot of people are going to lose jobs in ministerial offices because the corrupt ministers are putting pressure on political staff in ministerial offices to commit illegal activities. And we call upon the political staff in ministerial offices to refuse to comply with illegal instructions because I can smell COVID-19 commission of inquiry. People are going to be arrested here. So be careful. Don't get involved in illegal activities. When a minister insists that you do an illegal activity, ask them to write down so that when the commission comes, you can say, I was acting on the instruction of my bosses to save your future and the future of your families and your children. Thank you. Khao Khelo Mokholeho from UFM and Newsnote Agency has three questions. Based on several EFF statements opposing calls for the lockdown to be relaxed, one gets a sense you are not just opposed to the lockdown being ended, but that you have preferred for it to be stricter than how it was even at the initial stage. Is that still the case? Would you have preferred a more stringent lockdown? The second question. Looking no, we, 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 we wanted a, a level five. Because nothing has changed. Because when we started, we were told that we will only change when the infection, infections are 45 per day. 
The infections are not 45 per day. They are now at 1,000 yeah, per day. But you lift. So meaning, we are no longer guided by science. We are guided by other things. So we should be at level 5 by now. And Western Cape must be at level 6 if there is anything like that. <laughs> because there's a problem there. We are moving to levels even with areas that are in a deeper crisis. So that's what the EFF will prefer. And the EFF would have preferred a much more disciplined soldiers on the streets. Police, uh, the, the traffic cops, law enforcement generally on the ground to teach our people to comply. The EFF would have preferred more testing and testing and testing. Not this is screening with the, this uh, thing that looks like a, a tray gun. It's a waste of time, that thing. Because a lot of people got screened that th with that thing and then they, st they were approved that they are fine. And then they still tested positive. We need massive testing. Massive testing. So uh, that's what the EFF needs. The more people we test, the better. And then we need a compulsory quarantine for those who test positive. When we called for people to be quarantined in Robben Island right at the beginning, no one listened. Before a single death. We said anyone who's infected, quarantine. They couldn't, you know why? The majority were white people. But well, this government is very scared of white people. So, uh, uh, if we had quarantined people then, 45 per day was going to be possible. And more, if Robben Island is not uh, enough, each province would have identified its own place or a district, a quarantine place, or municipalities, quarantine places. We wouldn't be where we are now. No one cared to listen. So we are in this mess because there was no strict law enforcement on the street. Look, our soldiers are not Dacha smokers or uh, Drew smokers. They're not crazy. They didn't go around beating up people and doing... They are isolated incidences. Because you ought to quantify what you are saying if you say soldiers are brutal. What do you mean? You must ask how many soldiers are on the ground? How many are accused of brutality to see if indeed this is a general phenomenon among soldiers? They helped those people. They helped us. And if they were given support, they would have helped us more. The first incident I saw was some drunkards were drinking alcohol here in Alex on the pavement when we were told to be at home. A person just leaves his home to go and drink on the pavement. And then when the soldiers talk to them, they insult the president. Those are the people who must defend. The soldiers don't have a problem. You are saying soldiers make black people to do frog jump alone. They don't make white people to do frog jump. Eh -eh. The soldiers do what their government is doing. The government of South Africa will never make a white person do a frog jump. So why would a, white, a soldier make a white person to do a frog jump? They are following their government. So a government that has got no regard for black people, soldiers will follow that. So, uh, white people are not being subjected to the same treatment as black people. That's fine. We know that. It's a reality of our life. It's, a, it's, a, it's our daily struggle. You know why uh, whites are angry with the soldiers and the police and all of you, you join. Hey, hey, yeah, these soldiers are brutal. Uh -uh. 
They don't want the soldiers and the police on the street because whites are not used to be policed. They don't want to be policed. They know policing to be meant for black people. Now this policing is coming into suburbs. What type of policing is this one? Let's go to court. <clears throat> we can't be subjected to policing. So policing is for blacks. That's why they hate it. Because now they've got a taste of what our people went through in the 80s and the 70s. It's not even close to what we went through. They are complaining about police visibility. That's what their problem is. They don't want to be policed. Worse, policed by black policemen. It's disrespectful in terms of white privilege. That's the problem they have. So we need very strong soldiers who don't care whether you are white or black. You must comply. And then test positive straight to a quarantine place. Let's protect society. Today wouldn't be where we are now. You know why he's not there in Cuba? There you comply. Then. They don't have time for jokes. You comply. So you, in Cuba, every street has got a doctor that conducts daily routine tests, not of COVID-19, of all types of diseases, sugar, high blood, and all of that. Every street will have some form of a medical center where they go and uh, they, they are given some medical attention. Here, we don't have capacity to do such things. If Cyril says we must go to the streets, when we say nationalize private hospitals, we mean that every person who is sick must go to the nearest health facility. No medical aid. And that person must receive medical attention. If we are going to go back the way we are going, let everyone have access to everything that has got a red cross symbolizing medical center, be it private or not. If you start being sick now, next to uh, Sunning Hill Hospital, you fall next to the gate. This is where I want to go. And then you must be admitted there. Whether you have a medical aid or not, that's what must happen. So that no one has got a privilege of buying life. We must all be given a chance to fight. The second question is looking at how ANC councillors have been out and about disturbing and disturbing aid, oh, distributing aid during the lockdown. Do you anticipate this giving the ruling party an edge during next year's local government elections, or is it too early to make the call? Well, uh, if our people want to vote for people who give uh, food parcels uh, to relatives and friends and comrades, uh, that's what they must vote for. In Mpumalanga, we found the whole truck of loading food in a councillor's house. With, with, with community halls being there, with municipality being there, a track of loads in a councillor's house. We have asked EFF councillors, do not get involved in a mess. Allow them to do what they are doing. Our people are not fools. They will see them for who they are. During a crisis like this, you cannot see party colours. A hungry person is a hungry person. If you've got the capacity to feed, you must feed them, even if it means the food will end here before you reach your own. It's okay, as long as you saved some life. That should be enough. We are collecting money as the EFF. We are giving it to Solidarity Fund. Why? Because if we were to distribute it, the first temptation of politicians is to distribute that money through partisan lines and will be accused of the same thing. So we're giving it to a neutral board we want to believe. They will know whose money they've eaten. 
who are going to contribute again this month, they must never make a mistake of eating EFF money. Let our money buy PPEs. Let our money buy food parcels. We don't care who you give the food parcels to. Give to the hungry South Africans. We love this country, South Africa, more than we love the EFF. That's why we formed the EFF to save this country. We cannot distribute it. I'm doing food parcels where I come from. But I do them in such a way that I don't get involved. Because if I get involved, I will remember that this one wrote this about me on Facebook. This one did this. Uh -uh. I don't want to get... People are hungry. Even my enemies feed them. Because I want, to, I want them to live law to see this organization take over government. So I don't want them to die before. I want them to die out of shock when we're at the union building. I don't want COVID-19, no. If, if there's anything, give them PPEs. Give priority to our enemies so that they can live long to see the EFF take power. So ANC thinks it's smart, especially in, in Tuan. They go around with party colors, distributing food, and all of that. And you know what they don't know, DP, is that they are putting those volunteers of the ANC at risk. Because when they get infected by the disease, those volunteers of the ANC don't have medical aid, by the way. Many of them don't even have proper shoes. So they're going to die. So ANC is sending them to go and die. So we're not going to do that. If that gives them an upper end, so be it. But we're not going to risk the life of our hard-working ground forces because we want to have an upper end. The EFF is getting there. We are building this thing ground up. And it's going to be uh, uh, untouchable. I mean, we are supporting our artists with the little we have. They are not supporting artists. There is one artist who used to sing quiet. I don't know what he's, he's doing now. They said, no, uh, this guy got money of uh, arts and culture. Okay, but the money must be given to the people who are losing income because of this thing. This one didn't have an income because he's no longer singing. All I see of him is him going around taking pictures at every gathering, but he's no longer singing. But because he's a mascot, they gave him money there at arts and culture. So we're going to demand the list of those who got the money from arts and culture and what criteria did they use. Because the arts and culture money is our money. You see, even these ones who are getting from the EFF, the artists of the EFF, they still qualify for the arts and culture. It's their money. So why give ANC mascots money of government alone and not give to everyone? If you want to give to the ANC mascot, give them ANC money. Won't get involved there. But once you give them the department money, it's our money, all of us. Everyone must benefit. So fighters must be safe. Fighters must protect the elderly. Fighters must go to every space that is opened to ensure that there is compliance. And when you go there yourself, you must be compliant yourself first. Protect yourself first before you can protect others. Make sure even the shops at home, they are compliant. Make sure the workplace is compliant. I've never seen workers being cowards. Why South African workers want to be cowards now? Close your factories. Close your offices through protest because they, you've got proof they got UIF money and they didn't pay you. 
bring that thing to the attention of the EFF. Every company that received UIF money and did not pay the workers, it must be a target of assault from the EFF. Let's expose it. Let's report it to UIF. Let us open a case of fraud because that money is due to the workers. It's not for electricity and rental. So the bosses who have eaten the UIF money and did not direct it to the workers, we must go and open cases of fraud against them. They must be arrested. Government must come very strong, even in the regulations, that anyone who has not given the workers the UIF money, if you got it, it's a punishable crime, and such people must be punished. We can defeat this thing, South Africa, if we are decisive and do not take nonsense from anyone, be it a greedy politician, be it a greedy uh, bosses, be it a greedy religious person. Let's take them head on and tell them not with our lives. You're not going to risk the lives of our children the lives of our elderly because of your greediness. Ramaphosa told you that it is in your hands. From today moving forward, you must know that you are leaderless. You have no commander-in-chief. He has resigned as the captain of this ship. But black people, you are not on your own. It is not in your hands. It is in our collective hands. We'll fight this together like we did when they were in prison, when they were in exile, when they were underground. You fought against the most brutal regime and you emerged victorious. Even now, collectively holding each other's hands, not literally, we are going to defeat this thing and we don't need the cowardice leadership of the ANC and also of that rented president called Ramaphosa who's not going to give us any solution because he's micromanaged from Stellenbosch. So anyone who still believes in Ramaphosa, then you believe in miracles. You've got yourself to blame. Thank you very much. Done. Thank you.